Uh, moving on, the funding winter has hit the startup space in India this year, but agri-tech startups have been hit even harder. From receiving $1.2 billion in funding in FI22, agri-tech companies have only seen $700 million last fiscal. So what should agri-tech companies do to stay afloat? My colleague Akhil Vishwanath finds out. Two years ago, India's agri-tech startups experienced a growth spurt, fertilized by venture capital funding. However, with the onset of the funded winter, the climate turned harsh. Funding for this sunrise sector dropped 45% from $1.2 billion in FI22 to about $700 million in FI23. That's as per an FSG report. So for growth with fewer dollars, what should the playbook be and how are investors assessing the market? To find out, I am at the Omnivore and Kaladri Capitals event, Agritech, now and beyond. People are beginning to understand what this new normal is. This new normal does not look like 2021. It does not look like 2020. Honestly, as someone who's invested in this ecosystem for a long time, it looks like 2018. The prices that we thought were normal in 2018 are suddenly normal in 2023. We've kind of come up, come down. The crazy surge that we saw I don't think we'll necessarily repeat that, but I do think things will get warmer and warmer and we'll start to see good times again, maybe a year from now or so. But I think good companies, right, that have good business models, when they come out to raise, will be able to raise money. That wasn't the case 12 months ago, it is becoming the case again. But investors are setting some tough rules, particularly for mature agritech startups. Late-stage startups were the worst hit in 2022 with a funding slump of nearly 40%, as per an Omnivore Act Funder report. Growth-stage startups, however, saw a marginal dip in funding, but now even they have to follow a strict playbook and growth at any cost is not on the plate any longer. Playbook fundamentally is about profitability, product market fit, and cash flow cycles that make sense in, in terms of working capital. Um, I think that's going to be the playbook for the foreseeable future. I don't think we're returning to a zero interest rate environment anytime soon. And so that's what companies are going to have to focus on. And I think as the growth stage starts to heat up, that's what growth investors are going to expect. And so companies should be preparing themselves now for when they come out in 2024 and, and try to raise growth rounds, knowing that that's where the market is. Over the last few years, tech-enabled platforms and marketplaces became the hottest thing in agritech. Now startups working closer to the farm are in favor. Kalari Capital's Vamsha Krishna Reddy says startups must focus on boosting India's overall agricultural yield, which he says is 40% lower than global benchmarks. Boosting crop yield could also help startups get better margins. The problem is that while tools such as soil health monitors and crop disease detectors have been introduced, they haven't been able to scale. A lot of technologies and founders have built these solutions. But I think the important thing is how can you build solutions which can be scalable? Like drones have been able to do it for a particular space and they're actually a very good um, you know, model for us because you know, then they can spray hectares of lands um, uh, in an easy and efficient and cost-effective way. But there's a lot more problems to be solved at the you know, soil level, at the weeding level, at the tilling level. So this is where I was talking about tools which can come in which are very very relevant to India, tools which can actually cater to smaller farm sizes within India but have the scale to actually you know um, uh, develop and uh, grow massively. Omnivore, which recently announced the first close of its new $150 million agri-climate fund, is also looking for startups working closer to the farm. The three key themes for the new fund are agri-food life sciences, rural fintech and climate smart agriculture. Through its Omnix Bio initiative to support agri-life sciences and biotech startups, the Venture Capital Fund has backed four startups with the most recent investment coming in Alt-M. The startup was founded by two former executives at Tesla to help the lab to market journey of biomaterials which could help reduce carbon footprint. Whenever researchers and sort of scientists try to scale, uh, that's where you know, they don't understand the concepts of supply chain, manufacturability, scaling up. 
and this becomes sort of the value of death for biotech companies. And what we're trying to do now with all time after we return to India in 2021 to sort of you know make in India for India and for the world. Um, we're just trying to apply the principles of manufacturing and you know production rigor that we learned in the world of automotive through the last decade and at Tesla now to the world of biotechnology and biomaterials. So that is what we're trying to bring uh, you know bring to reality with all time. In exchange for funding, investors have set some tough challenges to India's agrotech startups. They not only have to scale with sustainability, with strong unit economics and a path to profitability, they also have to bring innovation at the farm level and not just create marketplaces. They are also tasked with bringing climate-friendly practices and boosting farm income for India's 113 million farmers. This funding winter, India's farmlands have turned into battlegrounds for agritech startups. With camera person Saurav Chauhan, this is Akhil Vishwanath for CNBC TV 18.